Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be showing you these beautiful sunflower nails today. We're going to be using some poly gel and some carving gel. It's got the poly gel ombre and a little bit of bling. I will be using products by Savaland, and this is their nude poly gel kit. I do want to thank them so much for sending this over to feature and review for you guys. But as I always say, just because a product is sent to me, it does not change my opinion on the product. So if it's not good, I will let you know for sure. But this is a good one. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you what I've got here in the package. And one of the tubes did explode in transit. So I've got some poly gel mess left over. So <laughs> I've cleaned that up. And then I'm going to show you guys all of the color swatches. Hey, this is Zach. Be sure to hit subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss out when Chal uploads new videos. And when you hit subscribe, you'll be part of her polished pride. So as promised, I did pick a winner for my question of the day from my Mermaid Nails video. Heather Davis, I do want to thank you guys so much for your submissions. Heather, please reach out to me within 48 hours to claim your prize. Hello, Heather! <laughs> You can reach out to me on my Instagram, which is the same name as I am here on YouTube and always linked down in the description and up in the corner of the video. My question of the day for today is, what would you guys wear if you were getting married? What kind of nails would you wear? Would you do some more mellow, kind of traditional, nude or white? What would you do? Glitter? Bright colors? I want to know what you guys would wear. So like I said, I do random giveaways a couple of times a month and it always will be based on the question of the day. So if you want to be eligible to win a future giveaway, make sure that you are answering the question of the day. I will not let you know what videos are going to have the giveaways. So just make sure you're answering that question and you will always be eligible. So I'm just going to go ahead and buff the shine off of the nails here with my mandrel and sanding band. And while I'm doing that, I just want to let you guys know I am very, very sorry that I have been posting less often right now. I am coming up on 14 years of marriage with my wonderful husband that I'm sure you guys all know by now. And we are renewing our vows. So there's been a lot of planning and a lot of things going on over here. So I apologize that I haven't been as active, but I will get back on track after our vow renewal ceremony has happened and that's why i wanted to know what you guys would wear on your wedding day or vow renewal day um i think i'm going to go a more traditional route but you guys will definitely see the nails because i will do a video to show you guys what i am going to be wearing it's going to be a little weird for me <laughs> because i usually have a different design on each hand but for my wedding they will both match so <laughs> it's a long time since i've had matching nails but i will have matching nails very very soon <laughs> So after I removed off the shine from all of the nails, I went ahead and cleansed everything with alcohol to make sure there is no dust left over. And I'm using the base coat that came with the poly gel kit. And I'm just going to kind of scrub that in and really wiggle it into the nail. That way I can make sure that it has great adhesion for when I put the poly gel on. I do keep these layers very, very thin. So you do not need a lot when you go in with the base coat. If you go in with too much, it's gonna have an opposite effect and you're not going to get that good adhesion. So just make sure you're working with a very small amount and I like to scrub it in so it gets into all those little grooves that the sanding band made. And that way I always get the maximum adhesion. So once I've gotten this applied to the nails, I will give it a 60 second cure and then we will go in with some poly gel. Thank you. 
So for this set, I wanted to have a couple with the yellow tips with the nude ombre coming down over the yellow. So I am going to be using a yellow gel polish for this. So I'm not working with a lot on my brush. I'm just painting on a thin layer. And I'm going to do this on the pointer and the pinky. Then we'll give it a 30 second cure and I will go in with another thin layer and kind of try to fade it back a little bit better so that it has a nice blend with the nude poly gel. So at this point, I'm removing almost all of the gel from my brush and I am very lightly kind of blending out that back area so that there's no harsh line. And that way when I put my nude poly gel on top, I get a nice smooth transition and a great blend between the two colors. Once I've gotten this applied, I will go ahead and do a 60 second cure just to make sure it is cured all of the way through. And then I will start with my poly gel application. So I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of the poly gel directly onto the nail. And then I will use my poly gel brush that came in the kit. And you can use slip solution, or you could use alcohol, or you could use base coat as your slip solution when you're working with poly gel. I do love working with base coat, but for something like an ombre, I choose to work with alcohol rather than the slip solution or the base coat just because I have more control over it. I don't always know what's in a slip solution. Sometimes they've got a little bit of acetone or nail polish remover in there, and that can leave a little bit of streaking. So I don't always use slip solutions, um, but I do love working with the alcohol. When I'm doing an ombre, I need the poly gel to have a bit of grip left, some stickiness left, so that way when I pull it down towards the tip of the nail, it kind of grabs onto my brush and pulls down the surface of the nail. I hope that makes sense. But with base coat, it makes it very soft and very slippery. And so if I went in with base coat to do an ombre, I might not have that stickiness left in the poly gel enough for it to get a nice clean blend down into that yellow. So after I got the poly gel shaped around the natural nail and the apex where I needed it to be, I just used the tip of my brush and kind of blend that poly gel down onto the yellow. Now I'm going to use the same nude color and I squeeze it directly onto the nail just because that way I know I'm getting the correct amount. I don't like squeezing it onto the spatula because then I don't always have enough. Sometimes I have too much. So for me, it's easier to do one strip of poly gel down the nail. And then at the very tip of the nail, I just leave it very, very thin and kind of cut it off there when I'm squeezing it out. So when I'm working with the poly gel, I first go back around the cuticle and make sure I tuck everything back to the cuticle and make it flush to the nail, making sure that there is no ledge left there. Then I start pulling from that center strip of poly gel, I kind of pull the edges down to the sides. That way I've got a nice bulk of the product left up in that apex area and the side walls and tip of my nail are nice and thin, but still covered with product. As I'm working with the product, I do try to keep my brush a little more wet when I'm trying to smooth out the surface of the nail. And that way I can get it as smooth as possible without taking up too much time and worrying about it too much because we can always fix the surface in the filing. Everything comes together in the filing for me always, as you guys well know. So I'm just going to continue to smooth that out and then make sure I am pressing any excess poly gel back into shape on the tips. I do also cure the nails a flash cure of 20 seconds before I move on to the next one. That way I can ensure that if I touch them or bump them, they're not going to get messed up or ruined. It just holds it in place long enough that when I get to the end, I can give it that full 60 second cure. I only do the flash cure because if I was curing each nail 60 seconds as I went, that adds a lot of time to your service. So I just do about 20 seconds, make sure it's held in place really well, and then I move on from there. So I'm gonna let you guys watch as I continue to work the poly gel on these other two nails. Breaking news, 
got me breaking, 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 breaking. I was present, hopeless, praying, 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 praying. Struck down at 20, plenty left to pull behind you. You ain't peak, death was peaking, now they speaking about you, leave it alone. Hope you grinning while you watch your bros on some soulful sunny shit to brighten up a wounded soul. Honest, you the penny, uh, pick it up like Chevy, uh, new age Machiavelli, uh, disagree, don't tell me, uh, now you in infinity, we 98, trust that he be good. On the ball like BB, don't make no mistakes, got the faith, the 18 just not gonna be the same. Finna be down generations, not gonna be in vain, too young. Why you gotta go, why you gotta go, I just wanna know, I just wanna know now, too now. Crying, getting old, crying, getting old. Hope you free your soul, hope you free your soul. I might have caught the June blues. Yeah, I wanna try myself inside the juice. Yeah, you know I keep on running from the truth. Is that not? I'm just a lonely fucking you. Now when I drive around, don't feel it all. Why it's getting colder? Waste away, don't know what life about Another day go by, don't know what got me down Drum blows, yeah, I got the drum blows, yeah Walk around like who you, yeah Just something you get used to, yeah Go blame the drum blows, yeah It's just the drum blows, yeah Walk around like who you, yeah Just something you get used to, yeah So now that I've gotten that all applied, I'm going to take my clear poly gel and I'm going to place it right where that ombre starts to happen, right where that nude meets the yellow. I first brush it back up onto the nude and I try to make it kind of level to the apex. That way I've got a good transition and that way it doesn't have any kind of weird lumps or bumps for when I'm filing. Then I just work the rest of the clear down to the tip of the nail, making sure I'm covering the side walls all the way down to the tip. Now I do always work with the clear on top when I do an ombre because it's going to protect my blend when I go in and file. If I did not apply this onto the nail, I would lose some of the color from the tip of the nail and I would also lose that smooth transition and blend where the nude starts to fade into the yellow. So it doesn't matter if I'm working with gel, poly gel, acrylic, or anything. You always want to protect that ombre with some clear. Okay, so I give it a full 60 second cure, and this is how they looked before I went in with the filing, and this is how they looked after my filing and shaping. Very much more refined shape, a lot prettier. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using these carving gels by Savaland. This is what I'm going to be using for my sunflowers. This is such an awesome product to work with because you can get the 3D shapes and effects, but it doesn't set up like acrylic does. So you've got to cure it when you're done. And oh, I love working with it. It's such a good product. Of course, everything I use in the video today for you guys will be linked down in the description box. So if you are wanting to pick that up or curious about anything, have any questions, it is all listed down below for you. So I just started with a small bead of the brown. This is gonna be the center of my sunflower. And I use my 3D brush to kind of pull that flatter. And then I took my very tiny dotting tool and used that to poke some holes to create that sunflower type of texture. I am curing each piece 10 seconds in between. That way I can work with the next bead without messing up that first amount of work. 
So now just taking the same carving gel but in yellow and I'm going to work that into a nice petal shape. This brush that I'm using is a 3D art brush and I love it so much. I'm going to pick up another, that way I've got one for my gels and one for my acrylic because I don't like to use my acrylic brushes with gels as I use like alcohol on the brush and I just find that they dry out more if I go back and forth between the alcohol and the monomer. So I'm gonna keep this one for my gel and get another one for my acrylic because I love, love, love the shape of this brush. So I worked that into a petal shape and I did want um, a kind of detailed line down the center, but I wasn't getting quite the look that I was looking for. So I just went back in with my dotting tool and pressed that down in to create that kind of crease down the center. And then just using my brush again to kind of refine that and make it the way that I want it to be. Now, I didn't absolutely love this first sunflower most of it I did. There were just a couple petals towards the bottom of the sunflower that I was not happy with how they came out. So it's okay. The little ones were really pretty. <laughs> Sometimes 3D art is not always easy the first time with the first one and then you learn from the first one and when you go in with your second flower it's a little bit easier and you kind of know what you're doing a little bit better. <laughs> perfectionist. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm a perfectionist. Very detail oriented. <laughs> So the brush you guys are seeing me using now is another 3D art brush. I do love this one for acrylic, not so much for the gel. I do have two, one for the gel, one for the acrylic, but the, the hairs on the brush tip, they kind of separate when I'm using it with alcohol. And so they just don't give me the detail that I'm looking for. So you'll see me use it a couple times on this petal, but that'll be the last time I use it in this video because I just like this fine tipped one much, much more for the gel type of application. So I'm just pulling down the leaves into a nice point, and then I use my brush to kind of shape the petal the way that I want. And then I also use the body of my brush to kind of pull the base of the petal out a little bit, and that way it's got the rounded bottom that comes up into the point. I'm also allowing these petals to kind of curve in one direction as sunflowers, they turn to face the sun. The petals turn to face the sun. It's, it's such a cool thing to witness to see that one day they're facing one way and the next morning they're kind of turned to greet the sun. And as the sun moves through the sky, they slightly turn. It's, it's so cool, I love it. So I'm just allowing these petals to kind of curve in one direction because they are reaching up for that sunlight. <laughs> so I'm just gonna continue working the petal until I'm happy with it, making sure I've got that dent down the center to give it that nice petal definition and shaping. And then I use my body of my brush to kind of push that tip into a curved point. That way, like I said, it's got that curved type of look to the petal. Now on the little ones that I will do on the other nail, in just a little bit here. I didn't give them as much of a curve. I left them a little bit straighter and I did like how they came out. That was, They turned out very pretty. I apologize for any noise you guys might be hearing in the background. I've got some people working right outside my window. So sorry about that. <laughs> so going in with the same technique on this next petal, just patting, pressing, pulling the petals into the direction that I want. And I am working with very, very small amount of alcohol on my brush. That is just to help keep it from sticking to the gel. Because this is a gel product, if your brush is completely dry, it might stick a little and it might um, ruin the shape that you're getting and perfecting as you're working. So if you just keep it slightly damp and anytime I notice any stickiness at all, I just go ahead and wet my brush again and then pat it off on my paper towel to make sure that it's only slightly damp. You don't want to go in with too much alcohol as it will kind of change the texture of the product and make it a little harder to work with. Now this bottom petal here, this is the one I really did not like how it turned out. <laughs> and I feel like if this one was done a little bit better and less straight on the right side, then the, the flower overall would have looked better, but. <laughs> To me, when I look at this petal in particular, it's going to look like a banana to me. Yeah, it's a banana. 
let me know if you guys agree with me when I've got this one all applied and I'm going in with my next bead. Um, let me know if it looks like banana to you. <laughs> and then I end up adding a leaf right in between this petal and the next petal and that just made it worse. I don't know. <laughs> also with the sunflowers, um, I, I really could have and should have added smaller petals in between these larger ones, but I didn't. Um, I still really like the design and the way that they came out. It's just, you know, you, you kind of realize the mistakes or the things that you wish you would have done. And that way next time I know more what I'm looking for, more what I like. So it's all a learning process. Nobody's perfect. Everybody starts somewhere. And to me, when you love your craft and you want to be good at your craft, you're always learning. So I'm always kind of looking at the nails that I do and saying to myself, what could I have done better? What is it I don't like about this? What should I be doing next time? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so right here, it was kind of rounded at the bottom right there. And I really like that, but it will straighten out a little bit here. And then it looks good in this type of view. But when I flip the hand around, you'll see what I mean. It just does not look quite right when it's flipped around so that's another thing I would do differently next time is that I would flip the hand before curing the product and that way I can ensure that it looks good from both viewpoints both the client perspective and the other perspective the opposite angle see how it's kind of straightened out here a little bit on that right side no good no good <laughs> So I'm just going to continue to do the same thing and I will let you guys watch as I apply that and I will be back shortly. Okay, so I got that flower all shaped and cured, and now I'm going to add my little leaf. So I'm just using the green of the same carving gel, and I'm going to kind of press and pull it, and I'm leaving the leaves thinner than I left the petals of the sunflower. So I'm just going to work this down into a point where the sides kind of curve outwards and then swoop into the point. And then I will create a crease right down the center as well. I also, in the future, will add some veining on that kind of center vein on the leaves as I just think it gives it more definition and looks a little more leaf-like instead of petal-like when it's got the veining running from that center vein out into the body of the leaf. 
So again, I'm just going to continue to pull that out until it is nice and thin and pointed. And when it meets here with the sunflower, it's looking a little too triangular for my taste. So I will go ahead in with the tip of my brush and work that green out so that it's not quite meeting up with the edges of the petals. You can see here how I'm doing it on this side and I'm gonna do it exactly the same on the other side. I'm gonna pull that side edge away from the petal a little bit and that way it'll be more rounded rather than triangular. So I know when I did the first sunflower, you guys couldn't really see when I was adding the little texture dots with my dotting tool. So on this one, you will see it much better. You're going to see how I press it down into like more of a flat circle. And then I am going to use my dotting tool to poke texture into the center of the sunflowers. Now the first sunflower was left in real time, but for these ones I do have it sped up because it's basically the same process over again, but I wanted to leave it in so you guys could see the, the small differences in the shaping and forming of these two flowers rather than the first, as just like with anything, you kind of get better as you go along. Just like when it's my first set of nails for the week and I do my first nail and it's a little bit bulky, but by the time I get to the pinky, it's it's really well shaped and much nicer. <laughs> so same thing with any kind of art. So I'm just going to let you guys watch as I work out these little flowers here. And again, I'm just gonna use the same process of putting down the product, using my dotting tool to create that center texture, and then using my brush to pull it into a petal shape and just get it formed the way that I like it. Now these ones are gonna be much smaller than the first as I've got two on this nail. So the beads that I'm working with are much smaller. The great thing about this carving gel too is that at one point there was a petal that I went in with too much. So I just pulled it right back off the nail and then took some of the product out of the bead and put the rest back in the jar. And that way it had about the same amount of product as the rest of the petals and it worked much better. Rather than being thicker or wider or bigger, they all match up. So that's what I just love about working with a product like this is that until you cure it, you can fix anything, you can remove it. If you don't like it, you can take it off. You can do whatever you need to do to make it perfect for what you are wanting. So, of course, if this was on a real client, I would work a little bit quicker rather than taking up so much time. But if I had a client that messaged me, what I do when I have a client, I always ask them to send me pictures of kind of what they're looking for. And then when they send me those pictures, I ask what it is about the pictures that they like. So if they sent me a few pictures of sunflower nails, I would say, okay, so you're wanting sunflowers. They would say yes. And then I would go practice those designs. So that way I've got an idea of exactly what I need to do when my client comes in. I hope that makes sense. But I would definitely recommend to any of you guys, if you're going to be doing your nails or someone else's nails, and it's a technique that you've never done, give yourself a little bit of practice do it on your nail first in a product that you can easily remove if possible. That way you can take it off if you don't like it. Of course, if you put it on with acrylic and you don't like it, you can always file it off. Um, it's, it's just, it's better to get more practice. And so to me, if you have like a tip that you can put on your table and work on the tip first, that way you can get an idea of exactly what you need to do when you're doing your nails.
your prescription it's funny cause i got addicted to you when we were in love and even though you broke it off a struggle with it like you were a bottle of pills i wish i could give in to my dependency but i move on because i know what's bad for me cause seeing you Open up that game. 
Okay, so like I said, we're going to go in with a full 60 second cure and then we will go in with some bling, everybody's favorite time of the video, adding the bling. <laughs> so I'm going to use my McCart Rhinestone Glue Gel, which is my very favorite product to work with when I'm adding bling and rhinestones. So I'm just going to put my rhinestones in and these ones I got on Wish and they are like there's multiple colors in the little rhinestones but they're more of like green yellow reds so you can see here that there are some reds showing there are some green showing and then there are some yellows showing and so i thought that these ones really complemented the design so i went in with those and then a couple little bronze ones on the edges a couple little clear and then my gold caviar beads just to kind of complement the design and add little detail in between. I love using caviar beads along with my rhinestones because I just feel like it really completes the design. So I'm just going to add a small little corner cluster here and do the same thing with my caviar beads. Then we will give it a 60 second cure and then we will go in with some top coat. So I'm going to use the glossy top coat that came with the poly gel set on both of the nails that have my rhinestone clusters. I'm going to make sure that I work that top coat right up against the rhinestones but without covering them at all. Then I will get a little detail brush and I will pick up some of the top coat that's on the nail and I'm going to cover my caviar beads. If you don't cover your caviar beads they can lose their coloring. They end up going silver because the color really is just an outside coating. So just make sure you've got those covered in top coat and that way you are keeping that coloring. And then I also use the detail brush just to get behind and in between any of the rhinestones. I'll do the same thing on the pinky nail as well.
Now for my sunflower nails, I'm going to be using my Matted Top Coat by Not Polish. I'm going to work this over the surface of the nail, making sure to really get in between the petals. And then I will cover the flower as well, just so that I can make sure that it has that top coat on it. Now before curing, I am going to get a cleanup brush, and I'm going to work the top coat off of the petals. That way I keep all of the detail, but there is a thin, thin, thin amount of top coat covering that flower. And then I'm going to, I gave it a 10 second cure just to hold it in place nicely for me so it doesn't move. And I'm going to do the same thing on the next nail, making sure I work that top coat around and on top of every piece. Now I do end up removing some of the top coat that is on the surface of the nail just because there was a little bit too much pulling in between the flower petals. And then I will go in with my cleanup brush and make sure I work off most of that matte top coat. And that way all of those details are kept. If I was to just top coat it and cure it, I would lose the veining, I would lose some of the texture from the center of the sunflower. And we just spent all that time making these beautiful details. So we wanna keep them the way that they are. So we're going to do one final 60 second cure and that is it. I wanted to show you guys the tips of the nails here so you can see the thickness of them. They are nice and thin with a beautiful C curve even though we used tips. I will have the tips that I use. They are full cover tips down in the description box along with all the products I use in the video for you guys today. Be sure to let me know what you guys think of the set down below. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, suggestions, or requests for different sets, let me know down below. I love to hear from you guys. Be sure to hit like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!